Coherent pluggable optics at 400 gig is arguably the hottest trend in optical networking right now. These pluggable optics hold promise to reduce network costs, increase competition among suppliers, and even bring in new network architectures of integrating optics directly onto routers, an architecture commonly known as IP over DWDM. As a longtime player in both IP routing as well as optical networks, Cisco is at the forefront of these trends and one of the leading champions of the new architecture, arguably, uh, or perhaps even the biggest champion at, at this point of, of the new architectures. I'm talking today with Bill Gartner. He's Senior Vice President, General, General Manager of Optical Systems and Optics Group, which is the combination of Cisco's DW, uh, DWDM Systems Group, as well as their Optical Components Group, all under one umbrella under uh, Bill. Hi, Bill, welcome. Hey, Sterling, how are you doing? Thanks for having me today. Doing great, great to talk to you. Let's jump right into it. Um, Cisco's right out there in front of things right now. What are the main trends you're seeing in, in, the, in the market today? Well, I think we have to look at both economic and technology trends. And from an economic perspective, I think the most significant trend is that uh, as we've seen the transition from 10 gig to 100 gig to 400 gig, the relative spend on router or switch ports versus optics has shifted pretty dramatically from ports to optics. At 10 gig, customers spent roughly 90% of the bomb on, uh, on ports and 10% on optics. At 400 gig, that's well over 50% that's on the optics um, as the port cost has, has shrunk pretty significantly thanks to advances in silicon. And that's really driven a lot of our investment and acquisition strategy. And it's, and it's really behind some of our acquisitions like Luxterra and Acacia more recently. Um, so this has led us to investment as well as acquisition. But then I think from a technology perspective, I'd say there's two important trends. One is massively scalable routers. You know, it wasn't too long ago that we had many bays of equipment that deliver, you know, a few hundred gig of capacity. And now we're putting 25 terabits and more into a, a single REU form factor, uh, just massive, massive capacity. Thanks again to uh, silicon advances. And the second, I think, significant technology trend is pluggable optics. Really, uh, I think that's going to change the landscape for optical systems as we see chassis-based transponders move more into pluggable form factors. And then I'd say one industry trend that's very important is open systems. You know, we haven't had open systems in the DWDM world in the past, and Cisco is very much an advocate of open and standards-based solutions, whether it's IP or Ethernet, and now DWDM. And we're very excited about the prospects of having interoperable DWDM. Certainly, I mentioned in the opening about um, pluggable optics being the hottest trend, but arguably so, uh, I agree. Interest in open networking, uh, the higher capacity systems and, and routing and, and all these things also come into play as well. Cisco's made a number of acquisitions. You, you've alluded to it. Um, the biggest one, at least in, in recent memory, is certainly the acquisition of Acacia, closed uh, just this year, hard to believe, uh, $4.5 billion, I think. Um, can you just bring us up to speed on where that is now? How's that acquisition working out for Cisco? Yeah, we've been really, really delighted with the performance of Acacia. Um, the team has been performing exceptionally well. The business is thriving. Demand is very strong. You know, Acacia, the, the acquisition of Acacia was driven largely by our belief in uh, routed optical networking and the, how the pluggable optic will change the landscape for optical systems. Um, I think we've, we've seen that validated with customer demand. And uh, we're very, very pleased with the progress. One, I think, important thing is that when we made the announcement around Acacia, we committed to continue supporting their existing customers, even some of whom may be uh, Cisco competitors. And I think that has that has proven to be very good. I, I, uh, I think at the outset of that announcement, we said we wanted to not only support those customers, but actually expand our business with them. And we've done some things structurally to make sure that they would feel very comfortable with that. Like we have separate sales organizations, separate ERP systems. We make sure that information does not flow across Cisco on things like pricing and unit volumes. And I think um, we're very committed to make sure that those customers feel like Cisco is a good supplier to them. And so far that's gone very well. Uh, last topic, but it's a big one. Routed optical networking. Um, 
Cisco has certainly pioneered the, the term. I used IP over DWDM in my introduction. Um, can you clarify what, what exactly is routed optical networking? And if you could kind of tie it back into the concept of IP over DWDM as well. Yeah, well, one thing I would start by saying is it's not IP over WDM. Um, IP over WDM has a kind of a long sorted history. And uh, some of the challenges with IP over WDM were that we tried to integrate effectively the transponder from the optical system into a router. And the biggest challenge that, that we faced with that at the time was that there was a massive density penalty that you paid in moving that DWDM interface into a router. And many customers were just unwilling to accept that penalty. So that was a significant barrier for IP over WDM. And the other thing that that drove was it was a custom line card for the router. So then the planning organizations and the, the operations organizations had to think about, is this a WDM line card or is it a, a classic short reach line card? And that created planning and operations complexity. And then I would say things like bringing software together, IP plus optical together, whereas they were typically managed in separate domains was a, was a third complexity. And so those things all, I think, drove uh, significant resistance to IP over WDM. And it did have some level of success, but I would say it, it was never a mainstream uh, deployment model. With the pluggable DWDM optic that now fits into the standard router form factor with no compromise on, on uh, cap system capacity, really a common form factor between the coherent and the short reach, um, a lot of those issues go away. There's no custom line card required. There's no density penalty. And then of course, we still have to worry about bringing IP and optical together. And that's really what drove our recent acquisition of Sedona because Sedona was really focused on bringing IP and optical together from a management perspective. So that, that I think is still an area that, that requires work, but I think we, we've got very good progress in that area. Routed optical networking is really a, a different architecture. It's not simply putting a DWDM interface into a router. It's stepping back and saying, look, we've built networks for the last 20 years in a very common way. And why did we build networks the way we did? And, and for the last 20 years, the router port was really the most expensive resource in the network. And so what that drove is a desire to basically bypass that router port whenever you could, because it was an expensive resource. And it, what it drove in the DWDM layer was not viewing the DWDM layer as purely capacity gain on the fiber, but we actually had to build a switching infrastructure in the DWDM layer in order to bypass these expensive routers. So as an example, if you were gonna go from New York to LA, you might think about going from New York through Chicago, through Denver to LA, but if those router ports are very, very expensive, you'd say, no, I wanna bypass Denver and Chicago and go straight from New York to LA on an express path. And that's effectively what we've done for the last 20 years. And we've done it kind of at the OTN layer and we've done it at the DWDM layer to bypass what was the most expensive resource in the network. Now, thanks to massively scalable silicon that's driving the cost per bit down significantly on router ports, the router port is no longer the most expensive thing in the network. And we really do need to take a step back and say, hey, if it's not the most expensive thing in the network, should we be bypassing it? Should we be building effectively a separate infrastructure, a separate layer in the network to bypass these routers? So that, that question I think needs to be answered, but the other insight that we've obtained in, in doing analysis of over a hundred customer networks now is that those express wavelengths that were bypassing Denver and Chicago as an example, they were very lightly utilized. In many cases, they were less than 10 or 20% utilization on that wavelength. And so we had a lot of these express paths that were lightly utilized. And so what we can think about now is let's go through the router because it's not the most expensive resource. Let's take advantage of IP layer aggregation and actually pack those wavelengths much more cost effectively. And what that, what that yields is in one case, we had a customer network that had a span with 55 wavelengths on it using conventional approaches of bypassing routers. When you go through those routers, you get much higher utilization on those wavelengths. And we ended up with less than 10 wavelengths on that span. Now those wavelengths are much higher utilization, like 90% utilized, but 
all the 55 wavelengths were like 10 to 20% utilized. So that's the source of CapEx savings. It's reducing the number of wavelengths in the network. It's not simply a uh, substitution effect between a pluggable and a transponder. It's actually getting much better utilization of the fiber through lower wavelength count. And with that, you get CapEx savings, but you also get OpEx savings in moving from a chassis-based transponder solution to a pluggable solution. You get power and space savings. And when we look at that in total, the total CapEx and OpEx savings, we see anywhere from about 40 to 50% uh, total cost of ownership savings for customers. And that, that economic value is very compelling. And so in the conversations we're having with customers, this is a long-term evolution. It's an architectural shift. It's not just a new product that gets substituted in the network, but we are seeing very significant customer interest in, uh, in deploying a route of optical networking architecture as their next generation architecture. You think, um, you know, um, you know, mainstream, I guess, two years out, five years out, 10 years out, you mentioned an evolution. What so I think, I think the, it will be an evolution of technology. Um, Google coined the term uh, Z, uh, ZR enabled networks, which I like, Zen networks. And uh, for some customers, it'll start by using a pluggable optic in place of a transponder. That's a, an initial first step. And I think that's an important first step. And that can be used in metro applications as well as long haul applications with a ZR plus, for instance. Um, and then customers will evolve over time to put more of their services onto the IP layer, aggregate those services more cost effectively, and then drive the traffic through the routers as opposed to around the, the routers on, on bypass wavelengths. I think that transition will take some more, some more time, but over time that will take place. And I think we'll see this evolution, a three to five year evolution to routed optical networks, but it can start today with ZR enabled networking. All right, good point. Uh, last question before we close out, uh, but we're hearing quite quite a bit of in the, I guess the FUD department, the role of Rotoms. Um, Cisco's view on Rotoms in the network and a routed optical network, lift them and throw them out or what happens with the Rotom? No, no I mean, as, as, I, as you, you look at that value proposition for routed optical networking, you, it, the, the value comes from really eliminating the need for bypass but I don't think that need goes away entirely. And for one thing, I think customers have deployed rodent based networks and those networks are in place today. And so they need to be able to migrate from where they are today to a future state. That means that the rodents are in place and customers can start the move to a routed optical networking solution um, with the rodents that they have in place. There's no issue with that. And then if you think about it, my argument for route optical networking is really that you go from low utilization wavelengths to, to very high utilization wavelengths, but a fewer number going through routers. But as that path from New York to LA, for instance, does fill up over time, as it does become not 20% utilized, but 80 or 90% utilized, then it would make economic sense to actually create that pass and path. And that's where Rotoms will play a role. So this is not a uh, an all or nothing proposition around Rotoms. Rotoms do have a role in the network. They'll continue to have a role in the network. All right, excellent. Uh, with that, we'll close out, but really appreciate your time. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Sterling. Great to be here. All right. And thanks, everyone, for watching this video on leaders in pluggable optics.